Oh boy, welcome home Keith. Hey guys, on this video I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Discovery Season 5, Episode 1. The episode is called Red Directive. Full spoilers from the start of this review. So this is going to be the final season of Star Trek Discovery. And it's been a really up and down show overall and for many diehard Trek fans a very frustrating show. I didn't like the first season really at, at all. That was a really rough debut season. It got a bit better in season two. There was definitely improvements. I know that's the season where they introduce Pike into this modern Trek and he's now got a very positive spin-off in Strange New Worlds so there was an improvement in season two and I would say season three and season four were both pretty strong seasons overall so it did progress and got better as it went along I would say even with still some of the problems of those early seasons which brings us to the final season the plot is that they're celebrating a thousand years of Starfleet and with this comes a lot of mention about new technology and where the crew of the Discovery are going to go from here. They're having this drinks reunion thing where they meet back up with Tilly who's of course been training the cadets at the academy. Saru is offered a new promotion at the start of this episode which could take him away from Discovery. He'd get an opportunity to permanently be with her and that's kind of the, the dilemma. It would take him away from Discovery, the crew he's now known for all these years. But he could obviously pursue the relationship a lot more easily. This mission by the David Cronenberg character Kovac who was once again back for this season and he says it's a red directive the red directive of the title and he's very cryptic about it because when Michael questions him about it later on he says this is classified it involves activity on a Romanan ship and you have these two villains who are introduced Marlon Locke and they beam down onto the ship before Berman and co can get there. They steal this ancient puzzle box, this Romanant puzzle box. So Michael has to reconnect with Booker, who she hasn't seen for many years. There's that fun line where it's like, I know a man who can track them, and that is Booker. And her Booker and this other character who's another captain who has like a vested interest told they have to work together on the mission they go down to this this planet called Fred and they're going to try and get the puzzle box open with Michael and co in pursuit and that's the gist of it and there's all these links to past Star Trek lore if you like because ultimately it's revealed that this is to do with a case than Picard worked on many many years ago and that it because eventually Cronenberg character gives Michael a little bit more background where he says yeah it's to do with the creation of the universe as as we know it today the creation of all of us or, or Tilly like hacks into the file at one point and we see like an old recording of Spock talking and they've done kind of a fancy CGI style thing to recreate that. But that is the gist of the plot in this first episode. And as I hinted, it's a really rough first episode back. It's really messy and more than anything, it's really devoid of feeling like a Star Trek show this first episode because I know a lot of people complain about modern Trek feeling like a high octane very sort of flashy action style show I haven't seen anything yet because they really go to town in this first episode on that stuff to the point where at times it feels very much like a CGI at like big 
budgeted blockbuster action movie like it literally feels like that it's like you're watching a video game at times with a lot of the action scenes which you shouldn't really feel that way watching the star trek show but it not just the visuals and the action which i think is poorly directed at times so that's another prop problem if it was well directed action i wouldn't mind too much but this is poorly directed sort of scattershot action where there's too much going on at times and i'm going to talk about one scene in particular with that but yeah the other thing is a lot of the dialogue and the interactions and the way people are acting feels very much like an action type movie and there's a lot of quipping going on in this and quipping i'm not sure quite feels in tune with what you think of as a star trek style show yes there's always been humor in star trek and i think there always should there's definitely a room for that kind of thing but when it's been done well in the past i think it's been humor which has naturally come from the characters or they're doing a, a certain kind of joke that maybe makes sense within context but this does feel more like quippy action style humor and like back and forth banter and squabbling a lot which i think after a while just grates on you it, it actually becomes annoying rather than entertaining and the other problem is i think the writing of this episode and a lot of the things they're doing is very repetitive as well like we've seen it maybe regurgitated a bit too much in modern track shows not not just in modern track shows but maybe in modern film and tv where it's like oh they've got a certain decision to make that being the, the stuff with saru they've got to make a choice about their future but they've got a man who can help them that being booked well he's got a contact because there always seems to be some sort of contact as a way into something to villains because i think they're a good example of what i'm talking about where they do feel like they're sort of from a different kind of thing like they don't really feel like star trek villains and also they just feel like they're off anyway for what they should be because my impression of them is then they felt a bit too quippy and action movie like to be villains because one of them's like an alien like a very familiar looking alien i forget which is which i'll be honest but as i said more than lock so you've got him and then you've got a more sort of sassy sort of female type villain who who does feel very kind of tough talking female type villain the two i preferred her a little bit more uh, i'm not sure why maybe i just got a bit more into the performance she was going for whereas him it stood out a bit than he was just this kind of generic alien the vibe was very off because they felt like they were going for an odd couple type five like almost like they were like buddy cops and as i said a little bit of quipping because like he says something to her at some point like you got here fast and then there's a quipping from her a bit later on when michael and co confronts them and she says not not trying to get in your way here or yeah something like that and, and in the next thing she says don't worry you you, you haven't but the villains were very odd, odd off and kind of weird because in some ways they felt more like not exactly heroes but the way they were bantering back and forth did make them feel more like they were like odd couple buddy cop type things than you might find as like the heroes of the show if you like the protagonist the alien as i said was my least favor of the two i just felt he was a little bit in your face and his like grunting and groaning got a bit grating and repetitive at time there's a really sloppy action scene involving them where they get to fred who's like the contact who's this dealer who they take the box to to open 
and he tries to make a deal with them and they're not happy they say the asking price is too low and once again there's a little bit of quipping in that scene before they eventually kill later on Michael and co get there too late but yeah, so there's a lot of one one line hatch and movie like lines because the one that really stood out to me with Michael was when when she first confronted them and they they send her her to in off into space. Oh, it's warp speed, but then she makes a crack about I've got a saxophone lesson to get to. It's like whoa, where did that come from? That's such a random cheesy almost action movie line and then it gets to the point where they have that whole thing on on the jet pats when they're on this island and it all looks very like pretty and flashy it's a very like dusty style island and there's lots of zooming and zipping about but Michael the other captain who they're in conflict with a little bit because he wants to do things a lot differently like he's a rogue sort of captain and I've seen that guy on lots of things he almost he always plays kind of roguish style characters and he's a good actor I do like him but I don't think he's best used in this episode to and Booker go off after more than lock on these like jetpacks and you're thinking is this star trek or star wars because that is very star wars and the look of the scene and the chase feels more like a star wars show or movie than a star trek show and it becomes almost like star wars meets mission impossible that scene because it becomes more and more how i attain And again, they've got to make a choice. Do they save this planet, which Michael is all in favour of? Or do they lose the villains? Because that's another thing, is earlier in the episode, Michael has said he can track them type thing, and then it works out, then they lose them. So Cronenberg is like very critical, and that's when they decide to bring in Booker. But yeah, this trace scene on like these jetpacks not only was it very out of character and didn't really have anything resembling star trek in it it was such a badly directed scene it was such a a sloppy and over long scene that was the problem it was dragging on and on and they literally do a split screen but it's like a triple split screen at one point where you see all three of them and it's like oh they're meant to be having this dialogue about what's the best course of action they're jumping back and forth and then they're jumping back and forth between them and the crew like you've almost got two different crews represented and it's just very jarring and it's almost like they got too carried away with having the gimmick of well we're we're gonna have these guys on the planet doing their thing but they're gonna have interactions with the crew and you've got all these big debates and dilemmas going on and they felt that was a way to bring in the crew and to have these constant debates but it just made the scene very messy and I just think it felt a bit like a cheap gimmick and and it just wasn't very entertaining to watch like it literally gave me like a brain type freeze watching that scene but it's so weird because there's a lot of banter back and forth there's a lot of quipping on the nose writing with michael and book whose relationship i have enjoyed quite a lot i would say but they're in a funny place because they haven't seen each other for a while and there's this whole thing Michael and Tilly talk at some point how are you going to broach this with Book and they bring up the fact that in the past Michael's been a bit of a hothead she's been a bit of a renegade who has gone against the mission because she's almost saying the same to this other captain Book says well yeah look who's talking type thing is the content of his lines he's saying I know someone a little bit like this 
but it's stuff like that where it just is very on the nose and it's like oh come on you you can do a little better than this with the writing and it's just becomes very grating them almost squabbling back and forth in the context of like this massive over the top action scene Stannance at some point he refers to Locke and Moore as very slippery so (laughs) that's another example of very cheesy action movie style dialogue to refer to the villains at this Tilly there's a little bit of a flirtation with this other guy who she works with I think he's like another teacher at the academy the medic scene where she's actually high on this special kind of champagne that they've been having at the celebration and again I really didn't like that scene I thought it was really annoying and and not very entertaining because Tilly's definitely one of those characters that I've enjoyed quite a lot over the show she i would say she's one of the best characters on the show she gets a fair amount of hate from star trek fans i think but i disagree with that i think she is one of the best characters and she's always been a bit more comic relief but this again didn't quite feel quite right it it felt a little out of tune with her character I think there might be new writers for this season. I'm not sure that that would make a a little bit of sense watching this, but like that scene with the guy and the awkward flirting, it did feel a little bit more screwball, <laughs> which again they're dipping into another thing, but that's the vibe I got. Then it was very quirky and screwball because uh, at some point she she has the line about are things getting warm in here or something and the idea is that she's tripping out a bit of the because of the champagne but it's also meant to be this very on the nose flirty sort of line the other stuff with tilly in the episode i do quite like because she's the one who hacks into files to do with this case and to do with the puzzle box And and it's then when it's revealed to her because she's kind of got that far anyway it's revealed to her then there's this link to spock which she later tells michael so that stuff with tilly i quite like because it it gave her something active to do the whole thing about having to tie everything back to previous trek is a little frustrating i know it's something this show has done quite a lot and some of it I don't mind too much. Like, like there is a way to do it which is quite clever and engaging. And maybe in a show like Star Trek you can get away with it up to a point. But this did feel like, again, it was a hitting that drum a bit too heavy. Stuff with Saru, which I'm not going to say that much on at the moment. But at the end of the episode, because of the way the mission goes, it, it makes him pause for thought and he makes the decision to choose the new promotion and and the romance over staying with discovery and at this point his girlfriend proposes to him so it seems they're going to get married but i could be wrong with this but in the scene she did seem to be acting quite villainy is going somewhere because she just proposed marriage and it's only the first episode so maybe that was in the back of my mind but also she is a Vulcan so she's the same race as Spock so I think it also crossed my mind that they could be doing a twist where she's involved somehow with this mission this case felt like she was acting a little bit heelish in that scene but it could just be because it's in the back of my mind then this is the first episode and they're doing this scene where she proposes marriage is there something afoot here so there's that stuff which i'm not sure how i would feel about if they went down that road it it might feel then it's a bit out of character for her But then again, we didn't get that much of her last season. I'm just wondering if it could feel like a twist for the sake of a twist. But like I said, I could be totally off. Maybe they're not 
doing anything like that with this stuff. So I'll definitely reserve judgment on that one. But yeah, it was a really rough episode, this one. I can't say I got a lot of enjoyment out of it at all. But let me know what you thought of the first episode. The first two episodes are up. So I'm going to be getting to episode two tomorrow. And let me know what you're thinking of the season how it might pan out as well but that's episode one of the fifth and final season of star trek discovery hopefully it picks up again next episode maybe this was a bit of a rough setup episode but it was very rough at times so again let me know your thoughts like and subscribe as always and share me out on social media you can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month on patreon.com slash board now you get a bunch of extras on there a bunch of like early access to reviews and special movie and tv commentaries in the future i'm looking to do more specialist type opinion based videos and like conversations some unpopular opinion stuff so if you want to get involved in all that then it's just a dollar a month like i said patreon.com slash board now but thanks for listening and i'll see you guys again soon